Good morning, dear friends. It's the AM out here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I am coming to you in joy and happiness, jubilation, celebration of Yahovah, our sacred Father God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the most powerful force that mankind can possibly know, acknowledge, or recognize. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and ask you in your infinite mercy and generosity to forgive us of all sin, cleanse us from the crowns of our head to the soles of our feet, inside out, outside and in. Cleanse us so that our prayer and meditations are clean and pure and perfect before you. Cleanse us, O oh Lord God Almighty, as we pray to you. And I thank you that you hear me in the blood and name of Yahushua Messiah. Baruch atai Adonai Yahuwah Eleheinu, Melaka Allah Mashir, Kadishinu B'mitzvatav, Vitzvah Nu Lagoim, Vada Lanu, Yeshua Mashiach, Kadnu Ha Ula Ulam. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Yahovah, King of the universe, who sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light for the nations and gave us Yahushua, Messiah, the light of the world. Amen. Now remember, friends, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, that is Holy Communion, remains in me and I remain in him. Blessed be the Father God Almighty and his holy sacred plan of salvation for me, you, and all who will call upon him and just ask for his holy mercy. Praise the Lord, Father God Almighty. I praise him, worship him, glorify him, and lift him on high. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite books from the Torah, Deuteronomy. It's called Davarim in Hebrew. Now, I'm going to say something to you that is extremely important. If you truly want to understand everything the Messiah taught in not only historical renderings, but philosophy, you need to understand that the Five books of motion called the Torah, and it's been called the book of the law, is the master key to the scriptures, period. It is the master key to the Psalms, the Proverbs. It is the master key to the Messianic scriptures, which you people call the New Testament. Messiah, when he was growing up, learned thoroughly the Torah, the Psalms, the Proverbs. He would have learned from the oral teachings, which are sometimes referred to now as Talmud. But that's all existed in his time. He taught from what God had told Moshe, take dictation, write this down. That's what he taught from. That's why it's so important we understand it. This is one of the master keys to understanding the scriptures. In Matthew 5, chapter, uh, verse 17 through 21, he makes it clear that the law did not go away and will not go away until all is done. What does that mean? Till Satan, the false prophet, Antichrist, are all, all demons, all devils, all evil followers of satanic worship are put into the pit and sealed forever. Now, earth. All of God's creation will be purified and truly be heaven on earth. And the new Jerusalem will be above us, right above the earth, and 
all of us who have been purified, rectified, liberated from all sin, cleansed from the crowns of our head to the soles of our feet, we will all be able to enter into the gates of the new Jerusalem and see it for ourselves. Light that never goes out. The radiant light of God Almighty 24-7. The hallowed streets of gold and crystal. The precious jewels on all the buildings and mansions in the holy city called the New Jerusalem. And that will be for us. Now we're going to be looking at Dabarim. And we're going to, this is Deuteronomy, all right? And we're going to be looking at chapter 32. So grab your holy scriptures. You may call it the Bible. Grab your Holy Scriptures and get ready because we're going to have an intensive study of the wrap-up of Moses getting his people ready because God has made it clear to him he's going to call him home. And so he's preparing everybody just like our Messiah prepared everybody before he was actually arrested torturously beaten, whipped with the cat of nine tails, put on the cross, preparing everybody, I will be gone for you for a short time, but then I'll rise and come back to you. He prophesied all of this. And there were the portion of his followers in Hebrew called the top ones, in Greek called disciples, who now he has called friends, meaning they have evolved in their learning ability and their anointed ability, power and authority. And in the Greek, they would call them apostles. But better than that, from the Hebrew, they're called emissaries. Why is that better? Because an emissary is anointed to speak exactly what the master teacher taught them to say. Yes, like ambassadors. Ambassadors do not speak without the permission of the president, and they speak exactly what the president has asked them to say to whoever they're talking to, kings, queens, pre other presidents, or leaders of other countries. So when a person is truly in the power, anointing, and authority of our Lord and Savior, they're an emissary, an ambassador of the Messiah on earth. Are there men and women like that today? Yes, absolutely. And are there false teachers and people who call themselves the teachers of Christ, the teachers of Jesus Christ, the representatives of Jesus Christ, and their false teachers? And they're lying to themselves and the people that they're sharing that with. Yes, that is true. That's the sad reality of it. So we have to pray constantly to the Father God through the helper that our Savior sent to us to dwell inside us and around us and in our home. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh Shekinat El, that means the presence of of the Holy Spirit around us and inside of us. Now, the Holy Spirit will always reveal to you when you walk into a ministry, whether it is anointed or not, or it's the church of the frozen chosen. There's no anointing. There's nothing going on. There's no miracles. Nothing. So you say, well, pastor, does there have to be miracles for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be there in that church? Yes. Because in the presence of the Father God Almighty, there will always be healing. There will always be absolute forgiveness. You'll see people falling out, breaking out in tears in sorrow of the sin they've done. Yeah. You'll see a real Pentecostal breakout. You'll see financial situations turned around where people are suddenly blessed in ways expectedly or unexpectedly. Their financial situation will turn around. I told a lady recently I was talking to 
Asian lady who I had a great conversation with, and I'm still communicating with her, and we've had some great conversations. And she's way back east in Chicago is where she lives. But she goes back and forth from Chicago to New York. Anyway, long story short, in speaking with her, I helped her to realize that, or I hope that I've helped her to realize that when you really don't care about your finances, like Abraham or Abraham in English, Isaac and Jacob, when you don't care about your finances, when it's of no concern to you, like Moshe, when it's no concern to you, like our Messiah, he didn't even carry the money belt. If he was really concerned about money and what had been donated to him, he would have had that purse on his body and in his possession. But no, he had the very person carrying it that he knew was a traitor, Judas, who he knew was a thief and was stealing from the purse. He knew it. He didn't worry about it. He didn't think about it. He wasn't concerned about it. Now, I'm not saying don't protect yourself from thieves, etc. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is be unconcerned about finances. And why are you unconcerned? Because you know that the greater good and powerful force of God Almighty will always provide for you exponentially, boundlessly, generously. And I'm talking about infinite generosity more than you can imagine in your minds more than you can possibly think yes exponentially think about that bringing it from the heavens through the holy spirit into this real solid touchable reality yeah because God's existence and where he's at and the ability he has to do all of this is as real as what you can touch. As real. And when it becomes that real to you, like this cup that's holding my morning cup of coffee, when it becomes that real to you, that you can reach out and touch the Father God Almighty and know that you are like our Messiah, at the tomb of Lazarus, when everybody was doubting, oh, he's been dead for four days, Lord. If you would have come before he died, we know you could have healed him. But they didn't understand that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the resurrection. And he had the power to not only resurrect Lazarus, you, me, or anyone. But he had the power to resurrect himself. Why? Because it was God on earth. God the ultimate. God almighty creator of heaven and earth. Creator of all life. Plant life form. Animal life form. Human life form. And God could raise it from the dirt. Breathe life into the dirt. That became man. When you know and understand that. And you have truly accepted it. Into your conscious, super conscious, deeper conscious, deepest conscious. Into your heart. You accept it as being as true and real and solid as this cup. Now. You know when you pray. Just like the Messiah who said, Father. I thank you that you hear me. And I say this so that all these people around me hear me say this. And no, now I'm paraphrasing, but this is what he meant. So that all these people around him knew that he knew that Father God Almighty listened to him. And would answer the prayer that he was praying. And empower him with the authority to call out to Lazarus, come forth. So he tells them, roll away the stone. Oh, he's been dead for four days, sir. Master, he's been dead. He will stink. His own sister said this to him. And our Lord and Savior in his infinite mercy, compassion, and proof that
that he was the resurrection of all life, including his own life, that he would raise Lazarus. They rolled back that stone. The smell came out. The men that rolled it back, they had to cover their faces. They were gagging. It was so bad. And he called out, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out wrapped in the burial wrappings. And our Messiah said, unwrap Lazarus from his burial wrappings. Yes. That's the kind of power and authority that you, I, everyone can have who truly are the emissaries and ambassadors of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua Messiah, the Mashiach Eloheinu, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. We can have that power and authority. I'm just a man. I know I'm just a man. I am not the Messiah, but the Messiah can through the sacred power of God can utilize me and utilize you to work the will of the Father God Almighty. Now, that's why our Messiah acknowledged the Father Creator. I pray this in the presence of all these people because I know you hear me. Now, he didn't say this, but this is what he meant. And I have said this so that all of them will know. Now, the point is, you and I, what did Messiah say? With faith, solid, rock-founded faith, as solid as this cup, as solid faith, when we get to that point now, Messiah himself said to us, we could do greater works than he. Let's think about that real quick. He walked on water. That's levitation. He raised the dead. And this was witnessed by the Roman spies. The Roman spies knew that he raised Lazarus and others. And the spies of the temple saw this. And reported it to Caiaphas and Annas, and they said very clearly, if this, if we allow this to keep going on, everyone's going to follow him and leave the temple. They won't follow the priest, the Levite priest anymore. They'll stop going to the temple and everybody will follow him. So now that's when they began to come up with the plan. And Messiah knew this was all going to happen before it ever happened. They came up with the plan. To get him arrested and crucified. Yeah. When you understand all this, you study the Torah, you'll begin to understand why it is God became a man to walk on earth, knowing how to read our hearts, read our minds, and know when all of this was going to happen and why it was going to happen and the purpose of it happening so that you me, everyone who will acknowledge him as Messiah can be saved of all sin and be assured of heaven when we leave the journey we're on in this earth. And we leave this earth and we go to heaven. The angels of our Lord and Savior will come for us and take us right to the gates of heaven. It's that simple. We don't have to rot in a grave. We don't have to wait for judgment. It's already been done. As soon as you and I claim the Messiah as our Messiah, confess him before men, that's it. You're reborn. You are a true follower of the Messiah. You got one place you're going, heaven. You don't have to fear death. You don't have to fear finances. You don't have to fear poverty. Because he took all of that to the cross so that while we're here on earth, we can be prosperous spiritually, socially, mentally, physically, and financially. We can be prosperous in wisdom, understanding, revelation, and supernatural divine knowledge of the sacred word of God. And I am telling you from God Almighty who 
through his power and authority, utilizes me to speak to you the master key to all scriptures is the Torah, the five books of Moses. And when you read that and study that and understand that, and am I the first person that has said this? No, I, maybe in the way that I'm saying it, but I know for a fact there was a great teacher who's gone on to be with the Lord. His name was Chuck Mistler. And the way he said it really just struck me like someone knocking me out and then waking me up and going, did you get it? Do I need to knock you out again with this information so that you get it? And I went, praise God, I got it the first time. Chuck Missler said it this way, that the Old Testament was a witness to the New Testament, and the New Testament was a witness to the Old Testament. That's the way he said it. And man, when he said that, it hit me like a building falling on me. And he was right. He was absolutely right. And then one day when I was praying early in the morning, God, I was waking up and God began to speak to me. He, I was speaking to one of our elders, one of our flock members, the gentleman that kind of oversees our IT thing. And the gentleman, uh, his name's Daniel Potts. And he taught me how to make these videos. He set up this computer so that I can make these videos when I want to. Because I told him, I said, sometimes the Father God Almighty inspires me and I need to get it on video right away so that I don't forget it. He goes, okay, I'll get you all set up. He got me all set up and everything. Him and I are talking and he's asking me uh, all the time, asking me questions about you know, the prophets or the Torah, etc., uh, recently, we had a long discussion about Isaiah, and now he's moved on to Yeremehu in Hebrew or Jeremiah. Anyway, long story short, Danny and I were talking, and God just spoke through me to him, because I always ask God all the time, give me Holy Spirit utterance. That means speak through me. Your power and authority and your will utilize me and speak through me. Let me be the vessel that you communicate through. Let me be your will, living, breathing, thinking, talking, doing, your will. God wakes me up and I'm talking with Danny early in the morning. And I said to him, for the first time I ever said it, it was just a few days ago. The master key to all the scriptures is the Torah. It is the master key. And when you figure that out, and after the years and years and years that I've been studying the Torah, it took me a long time for me to figure that out. But God woke me up to it and identified it to me. And I said, thank you, Father God Almighty, for speaking that through me because I know I didn't say it. Thank you. Thank you, Father. For it is God Almighty that uses me to work his will. Amen. And he can use you as well. All you have to do is pray out to Yahovah. That's his Hebrew name. You may call him Jehovah. You may just call him Father God. Abba. Just call out to him. Matthew 7, 7, 8 promises us. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Not. And that door of spiritual enlightenment will be open to you. And all the blessings of heaven will be open to you. All of them. You just have to believe. Remember, rock solid belief, just like this cup. Just like this cup. He is my cup, and he fills it to running over. Amen. All right. Let's start with Deuteronomy 32. Give ear, O heavens, and let me speak. Moses is telling the elements of heaven and earth to give ear. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth, 
Let my instruction fall as rain, my speech drop down as dew, as fine rain on the tender plants, and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of Yahovah. Now, superstitious people, fearful people. Does this is one of the things Messiah came to really straighten out with for all of us? Is yes, we are to respect the Father God in the greatest way possible to the point of fear. But God is our Father, our Abba. Messiah made that clear and wants to love those who love him. And he will be gentle and understanding like a loving father holding you in his arms, his hands. He will work with you from wherever you're coming from, whatever place you're starting from. Total naivety about him, who he is, what he is. And he will work with you until you grow up in him. As Paul said, there are believers who are feeding on the milk of the word like babies. And there are adults who are feeding on the meat of the word grown up into the Father Almighty. Now, on our way from the milk to the meat, we can't just... Pray to the Father and go, okay, I'm ready for the meat. No, God knows when you're ready for the meat. He knows when you are to be weaned off of the milk of the word. And now you have the ability to digest the meat of the word. God knows. You've got to trust in that. Now, so in chapter 32 of Deuteronomy, for I proclaim the name of Yahovah. Now, Ascribe greatness to our Elohim. Elohim means God Almighty. Now, I proclaim the name of Yahovah. There have been so many people that have tried to suppress that. Amongst the Hebrew Israelite tribes, it was suppressed by the Levitical priesthood. And it should have never been done. Because in Exodus 3, if you know and uh, what I said, Master Key. Exodus 3, God says, this is my memorial for all generations forever. So if you and I were to make a memorial for the Father God Almighty, his name would be on it. Just like if you were to make a memorial for me, Pastor Whitlock, my name would be on it. Why was his name suppressed? I have uh, so many reasons why, but let's not go into that right now. Right now, let's just understand. Here's Moshe all, all the people of Israel are gathered. And we're talking about millions who came out of Egypt. And there were sojourners, meaning there were people who were not of the Hebrew Israelite tribes, of the 12 tribes. There were Ethiopians, there were Greek slaves, Roman slaves, Asian slaves, all kinds of slaves that had been traded into Egypt, and they all came out. Now, God said, welcome them all in because you were strangers in Egypt. Circumcise them, and they can participate in every anointing and everything that I am doing with you and favoring you with, meaning they can be. Moses comes down from the mountain, and he says, Israel. In other words, everybody is circumcised into Israel. Not only physically circumcised, but your heart spiritually circumcised into the tribes of Israel. So the bottom line is this. All of these people, God says, if you will diligently obey my commands, Moses, God says this directly to them. And when they ask to hear the voice of God, God made this clear. That all of those people, no matter whether they were a pure Israelite blood or not, that they would be 
a kingdom of priests. Not just a Levitical tribe, but a kingdom of priests of God Almighty. What does this allude to? What does this mean? That doesn't mean that you're working as a Levitical priest in the uh, temple. What it means is what did the Messiah say to us in the Messianic scriptures? He said very clearly, we are to share this knowledge so that everyone knows it. We are to teach. Rabbi means teacher. Rabbis, all of us, to teach. Male, female, everybody, teach. Share this information with everyone. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be ordained. You don't have to be a rabbi. You don't have to be a leader of a flock and you're called a shepherd, a prophet, whatever title. None of that is what is important. What did Messiah say? With faith, you can do greater works than he. With faith, you can do greater works than he. doesn't matter if you have a degree. doesn't matter. None of that. All that matters is that you let the Holy Spirit lead you and speak through you. Know the word of God. Share the word of God, and it will all be done. And God will bless you mightily. And you will be speaking with people and things when the Holy Spirit speaks through you. Words will come through you to them. They will be saved and you will be surprised and shocked. Because you'll know that in your mind, your consciousness, that wasn't something that you thought of or planned to say. And it just came out. So this opening verse is so important because he proclaims the sacred name of God. Now he goes on to describe the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are right ruling. And L, which your translation would say God, and God, L means God, E-L means God. An L of truth and without unrighteousness. Righteous and straight is he. We're going to stop right there. Steady this, please, my friends. Share this video with people. Spread the news. You want to become a member of this ministry because you don't have a church you're going to and you don't feel like they're telling you the truth, the historical truth. This is history, people. This happened. It was witnessed by millions. And not only people of Israel, Hebrew bloodline or Jewish bloodline, people that were of all different tribes of the nations of that time, Asians, Greeks, Turks, Arabians who had been traded into slave ship. Yes. Egyptians who were slaves because they owed money to Pharaoh or landowners and became slaves because they couldn't pay their debt. Literally, there were Egyptians. And we know that there was Egyptian blood within the tribes because Hagar, Abraham, had child with Hagar, who was a pure Egyptian. So think about it. All of these people witnessed this, and it was written in the historical writings of these countries, not just Israel. Do this research thoroughly like I have, and you will find out. You'll be shocked to find out all of this information. Very surprised. I was. It really shocked me how, how so many other nations, Dr. Fred Wu, who I was studying Kung Fu with, he said to me, I can prove to you in history that the great flood occurred. He goes, I can prove to you, even though he didn't believe in the Bible, he didn't believe in the Messiah, but he knew I did. But he 
set me down one of the times I was there for a private lesson. He set me down. He goes, I can prove to you two major events in the Bible that actually occurred in history, and here's why. And I went, oh, okay. And I, you know, I respected him as a Kung Fu teacher. He was a great, intelligent man, had two PhDs and a master's degree. I mean, I and full tenureship at uh, High State University. I really respected this man. As I was sit down and I'm listening to him. He goes, first of all, let's talk about Noah's flood. I went, okay. And surprisingly enough, he told me, he goes, it's written in Chinese history that that flood occurred. And I went, wow. And sometime on another program, I'll share with you the second thing that he talked with me about. And it shocked me to my core that other nations, as far away as you can imagine from Israel, can you imagine this? Wrote in history at exactly the same time it happened in their calendar. What happened? The flood of Noah in the time frame of the Hebrew calendar was written in the Chinese calendar, and there was an exact correlation between those two dates. Ooh, boy, did that get my attention. Now, I'm going to confess to you, I really believed in the Father God without doubt or thought about Noah and the flood, etc. I accepted it as true, but when the Father God Almighty spoke through Dr. Fred Wu, through him to me, because think about it, I'm there to study Kung Fu. I was studying uh, Chin Tai Chi with him, and I was in the beginning stages of studying Wing Chun with him. Man, I respected that man. He was a ninth uh, generation grandmaster of, I believe it was nine different arts. He was an amazing martial artist. And when I was studying with him, he was much older than me, and he was much better than me and it gave me hope that as I would enter into my 80s which he was at in, in that time period that I would be able to be like him into my older age and it made me a bigger believer in the fact that the Bible when we read this goes on to say that 120 years old Moses' health was still great he didn't die because he had disease or he was old and he couldn't walk and he couldn't see. No, his eyesight was still perfect and his health was still perfect. God told him, I want you to go up to this mountain and I'm, you're going to die and I'm calling you home. It's that simple. Long story short, Dr. Fred Wu, Chinese grandmaster of Kung Fu, What an amazing man. And he shared with me why. Whether he realized it or not, that was a divine appointment by God Almighty that the Holy Spirit spoke through him to me to anchor in as solid as this cup is into me the knowledge that that flood and Noah existed and it happened. Isn't that interesting? Friends, until we meet again, happy trails to you. And I truly mean it. I send blessing and love and mercy of the Father God Almighty and the Holy Messiah to you. And remember, by his stripes, but it also says in Isaiah 53, his wounds and his beatings by his entire torturous sacrifice, you are healed. Amen. Like I said, until we meet again, happy trails to you. Be safe, be protected, be wise. Steady the Holy Scriptures. And remember, the master key to it all is the Torah, the five books of Moses. Amen.